hi royalty welcome back to my channel and to yet another video if you're a returning subscriber welcome back if you're new to my channel and you're wondering what you're up to hi my name is melody valeria or let let me see yes this channel is called on this channel you'll find home making content vlogs lifestyle content and anything that is fun and interesting at that time and currently we are pregnant i am a few months gone and currently documenting this series with you so we are recording this in real time so you get to have the full-on experience but in today's video though we are going to talk about something entirely personal something that i have been thinking about a lot and i would like to share with you guys and maybe help someone out there who is in the process of making the the same decision as i need to make so we're going to be talking about the kind of bread that i'm going for for this second pregnancy so i have to choose between two that is the elective c-section versus the vaginal birth after c-section so we're going to be talking about those two and i will just be sharing with you why i choose what so let's get right into today's video so before going into the depths of this video let's just start by defining the terms so that you guys may understand so when it comes to giving birth right there is the natural way of giving birth that is giving way through the vagina <laughs> that is the what they term the normal way of delivering usually that happens when you do not have any complications and a labor starts for you just naturally usually normal normal vaginal labor doesn't need you to be induced or anything like that so that is a natural labor but that's not the case for this video we're not going to dwell on that and there is also c-section c-section usually happens as a result of maybe medical complications usually they come up as an emergency when you have maybe tried giving birth naturally but along the way the medical team around you realizes that giving birth via the vagina is not viable and now you have to go through c-section usually medical complications during labor let's say the cord has been tied around the baby's neck or maybe the baby has pulled uh, in the sack and conditions around mothers the mother's health condition maybe high blood pressure or anything like that or maybe the mother getting tired or the baby getting tired during a strenuous and long labor process may lead to your medical professionals actually encouraging you to go through the c-section route right so that's the difference between a natural labor and c-section labor now when it comes to elective c-section though which is what we're going to be talking about mostly in this video elective c-section doesn't need basically a medical intervention it's a decision that you make um before the birth of your baby to say i am just going to go straight for the c-section maybe because of your previous experience maybe you have a, you have had a previous c-section or maybe you just want the timing for example because you get to plan when it comes to an elective c-section you get to decide when your baby comes and what time your baby comes and you get it's your decision basically it's not an emergency c-section and then there is a v-back v-back or vaginal birth after c-section is as the term says for itself um this is when you have had a c-section maybe with your first pregnancy you've had a c-section and now you want to try to go the natural way so that usually um is for women with 
no complications uh maybe you've gone for three plus years after your first birth that means you have completely healed your c-section scar your first c-section scar is is completely healed and now you can push and there is less chances of you having a uterine rupture when you're trying to push or you trying to there is less chances of you um rupturing your c your c-section incision rather so that is what VBAC is all about. So it's something that you arrive at after you speak to your gynae, your doctor, your medical professionals, and you get advice from them if you are fit to go through the VBAC. So those are just the definitions or how you define all the terms VBAC, natural birth, C-section, and elective C-section. But this video is going to dwell on differentiating and choosing between VBAC and elective C-section. Another important thing to note between a VBAC or a natural birth and an elective C-section or a C-section is C-sections usually take a long time for the patient to recover. For example, myself, I took more than three months to, re to recover or to heal my outside scar. Not sure though about the inside scar, but for the outside scar, it took about three months. And during that time, you just need a lot of help. You need all the help that you can get um, from the process from the process the entire process is scary itself c-sections are very risky they entail a lot of risk because this is a major 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 operation you get to be cut six layers of your stomach guys until they get to your uterus so that they can bring out your baby so you can just imagine the kind of risk that that takes some mothers unfortunately I do not make it out of that theater sometimes you lose the mother or the child or both so it's kind of a very risky operation it's a major operation that someone takes um in their life and it 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 just damages a lot for example that you just need to that they inject you in your spine that if you are not careful you might be paralyzed for the rest of your life because you moved an inch while they were trying to inject you guys trying to get up and walk because you need the blood flow right you need the blood flow to 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 be able to heal and imagine having to get up and walk around soon after being cut c-sections are just hard c-sections are hard and sometimes for other mothers they may also affect how your milk comes in um, right away. Sometimes, yes, your milk comes in right away, but sometimes it doesn't happen like that. So ju that's just the thing about C-sections. When it comes to natural labor, though, yeah, there is pain. There is pain. Labor is hard. I know because before I got my emergency C-section for my first pregnancy, I went through labor. I went through... 32 hours of labor and that was not something to joke with it's painful but the recovery process is much quicker than the c-section of course and yeah so let's talk about my previous birth experience now that i've mentioned that so my first son i had him via emergency c-section why because um it was established after 32 hours of labor that pushing was no longer a viable option for me induction worse i just had to go straight to get an emergency c-section so if you've watched my previous videos i've put up my labor and delivery story there's two they, it's a two-part story there's a part one and a part two so 
that will take you through how the whole thing unfolded so i started having labor pains on the 26th in the morning the morning of the 26th of august 2022 around 3 a.m that's when i started having labor pains that's when i saw my bloody show and around 6 a.m we rushed to the facility that i had booked for my labor when we got there um they did not come immediately it was drama guys it was drama you guys go and watch that video and you get to learn a lot of things about what went wrong on that day so it was just whole drama they later came and i was only one centimeter dilated instead of them sending me home they started doing the cervical checks already of which it's not advisable according to the doctor who then did my emergency section c-section it's not advisable to just start by doing um those cervical checks because that might put me or your patient into first labor so that is exactly what happened there so with them trying to check me i got into first labor so they were forcing my cervix to open basically by just trying to check me every hour so that happened and i spent the whole day of that day um in that facility and they did not return me home they did not say i should go back home and live at home they just kept me there so i spent the whole day and the whole night in labor and i was not progressing i was only on one centimeter dilation and the following day came which was the um, which was the 20 26 which was the 27th i was still in labor i was still in labor and it continued and i did not progress and somehow in the afternoon i managed to progress up to three centimeters but that's when i got stuck and now the doctors at the facility where i was started to get worried that i might now be tired and the baby is also now tired so they decided to transfer me to a facility which has the capacity to carry out c-sections or where I had to get an induction imagine and that is about 40 kilometers away because I was in Norton and I had to go to Warren Park so yeah that was the distance but still when i got to that other facility nothing had changed and the doctor slash guy that day was really pissed off because i was in a very bad state and it looked like i had started pushing trying to force my body to push at that point and that was affecting the baby so the doctor said there is no induction that is going to happen here there is no natural labor that we are going to try to do you are going straight into emergency cessation going to you are going straight to theater that's when i went straight to theater and by nine something i my baby boy was born and the recovery process was not something to 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 be happy about guys <laughs> The recovery process was just hard uh, from having to get up you know there is blood that is maybe just in one area where you've been cut um oh one fun fact is my husband was there in the theater he saw the whole thing he saw them cut me open he saw the whole thing every gruesome detail of it he remembers it <laughs> like that so anyways let's back, let's get back to the story so yeah um trying to get up as soon as you were cut like 
after the um, drugs had weighed off and everything like that let's talk about the headaches that you get after your c-section because of the epidural or whatever that they they inject into your spine there is this headache that you get that is very 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 bad guys after you have had your c-section that you're encouraged to have cock guys that is the worst experience ever now let's talk about having to clean yourself clean your wound each and every day remember this area in this point of time you're not supposed to let any water near the incision at all so you you are bathing yes but you are trying as let's be honest you are not bathing you're just trying to make yourself look presentable and smell fresh so you devise other ways to make yourself and make your bed you make your body look fresh right but as long as you're not making water run through or near your scar so what i had to do was clean that area with betadine and cotton so i had to get a little mirror like this <laughs> oh i have a book right here just had to get a mirror like this and clean my incision so you had to do it thrice clean you have to swipe like this one swipe the second time swipe the third time now imagine the kind of goosebumps my body is going through at that point because i'm just doing something that <sighs> at that point you're not supposed to do chores that are too strenuous for you i'm not supposed to carry anything with more cages that my be than my baby my baby was born at 3.2 kilograms that meant I am not supposed to carry anything that is more than 3.2 kilograms or else my incision will burst before I am fully healed. So I just need you to have the complete picture of my first bathing experience, right? And after six weeks, that's when you go back and the doctor will tell you if you can now bath or you should continue doing the better than stuff. And if your scar is healing well, if you have not ruptured and so on and so forth and all that stuff. So that was my experience with my first birth, my emergency C-section. that history is going to affect my decision now right okay have i completely ruled out vaginal birth after c-section no i haven't completely ruled that out in fact the moment that i knew that i was pregnant i was like you know what this time i want to try and have you know in a VBAC. So I started doing my research. So according to my research, I learned that it is absolutely safe for you to do a VBAC as long as you have passed 18 to 24 months after your previous C-section. So I counted and I said, you know what, I'm good. My months are good. It's been way over that. So I can try vaginal birth after C-section. So I started doing everything that, you know, you do probably when you want to have a, a natural birth or a vaginal birth after C-section. I started walking, I started exercising, I started drinking warm water, I started being so optimistic, I started watching videos on VBAC and all that but did i continue with that no <laughs> because at some point i just told myself i will continue in the third trimester okay i will continue in the third trimester 
but in the back of my mind i'm telling myself if you stop then it's just going to be hard for you to do every bike you need to exercise you need to do all the stuff but did i do it no i did not guys i'm now running out of breath and why i do not dismiss um a v bag completely is because i've heard and i've seen people with positive v bag experiences and some were even booked for an elective c-section and miraculously because god is just dope like that miraculously on the day that that person is booked for their elective c-section they go straight into labor and they dilate fast and they give birth they give birth and while the doctors are over there prepping for the surgery and all the patient is back there and she's already pushing so there are situations like that that may happen right maybe on my first pregnancy things went so wrong i was so naive as well as to rush to the hospital because of the first pain that i got or because i got the vaginal show or maybe my body will react different this time or maybe my body will just do what it's got to do this time so maybe i'm not completely ruling v back out the other reason is uh, the amount it takes the amount of time it takes for me to heal from a v-back is something to consider and i can get straight back to to my life after giving birth if i do a v-back now imagine if i have to do the elective c-section so the VBAC comes with lesser risks because this is not an operation. This is just you and your body cooperating and telling each other what to do and the health professionals helping you so that you can push your baby out vaginally. So I have not completely ruled it out, but I think my decision for this time is going to go to drama, please. So yeah we are going to be doing an elective section yes again so we are i am definitely not even sorry about that <laughs> it's a personal decision that i made a long time ago and also with my gyna and also some other underlying conditions that i'm not yet uh confident talking about right now but i promise you that video will come one of these days guys where i will be comfortable talking to you about some of the conditions that might uh have influenced me to choose an elective c-section again so we are going to be going in for a second time c-section we're going to be getting an incision for the second time only the difference is this time i get to plan when my baby comes so what usually comes with an what usually what usually happens with an elective c-section is i get to have a discussion with my gynae and to discuss when my baby will be fully developed and who way i want to give birth is it private or public i am for private by the way especially because i am not in my own country even if i was in my own country my first child we had him eventually in a private establishment suburban hospital so private it is again for my second child um we're going to have to talk about that with my gyna where exactly i want to give birth which private hospital we are going to give birth in we're going to talk about the day when the baby comes usually when you have an elective sex c-section you just know that okay maybe i'm booked 
for the 15th of March okay to get my baby so you get up on the 15th of March maybe you want to do a little bit of nursery or whatever and then you bath you take your bags and off to the hospital you go and maybe around 12 p.m you are rushed to the theater not rushed you are wooed to the theater because right now there's no rush right you're wooed to the theater and then they cut you open and then they give you your baby as quick as that what is not quick though will be the recovery process which i am dreading because i'm just telling myself are you ready are you ready again again and because my first experience i was in zimbabwe this time around i've been here so i don't know how these facilities in sa do in terms of c-section or what the aftercare for c-section moms i don't know what all that looks like but i'm just asking myself like are you ready are you ready because <laughs> you made this decision again but i know that in a private institution i'll be safe me and me and the baby will be safe as long as god is by our side we will be okay another reason why i am considering an elective c-section for this time is obviously my previous birth experience the emergency c-section was not something to marvel about it was not something good to experience but i just love the predictability of everything that comes after after my c-section i just have to make sure that i give i give myself enough time to rest to rest make sure that my scar heals properly and all that and yeah it might be a very very long process to deal with but at least i don't have to go through 32 hours of labor and at the end of the day I'll still have to go under the knife you get what i mean so this time i just know that okay without feeling any labor pains without anything i just know that on this certain day i'm going to get my baby the other reason why i am going for an elective c-section is what i talked about i'm listening to the advice of my gynae there are certain conditions certain complications i am classified as a high risk pregnant woman so considering that we are going straight to an elective c-section i do not one thing that i do not like doing is going against medical professionals because those people know things that we don't and they know how these things go i know that some, sometimes they just want to take your money because c-sections are way expensive than natural birth but guys come on it's better to be safe than sorry okay i know that for this baby for this coming baby i am not going through the labor anxiety of knowing when will labor start what will i do will my cervix dilate this time or not how many hours will it take for me in labor how many hours does it take for me to push will my body cooperate and all that this time i just know that it's go time when it's go time it's go time it doesn't matter about the recovery process one thing that i'm hesitating about is the recovery process and the issue with milk because it it took time for my milk to come in with my first pregnancy i had to do the whole kujgan zungwen ni mozakakangwa stuff drinking a lot of uh what do you call it stony ginger beer and all that but anyways that is it that's our decision for this second baby so yeah guys i hope this helped someone out there make their decision if you're a pregnant mama and you're wondering what to do between natural birth c-section way back or an elective c-section i hope that this video has helped you out so so if you're in the same boat as me um relax breathe 
these decisions are hard to make when it comes to birth and all that these are life and death kind of situations they are hard to make but take your time do a lot of research listen to your doctor listen to your gyna listen to your medical professionals on what's the best route for you to take and i wish you the best and i hope that you have a safe delivery let me know in the comment section if you have had the same experience with me in terms of c-sections and if you have anything else that you would want to know from me or if you want to share anything please do write in the comment section and i'll be so glad to respond to your questions to your stories to anything that you might want to say even to your general comments i really love reading your comments guys so for me to you love and light let's continue making our home sweet for royalty don't forget to give this video a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't and i'll see you in the next video